Hello, this is John coming to you from the same place you are. I'm back home. And uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about commodification of desire. And so what you're seeing right now, we're so used to. Um, we, we also have, of course, men now more frequently being used as sexualized objects. And yeah, this is a form of commodification of desire. But I think I'd rather you keep away from this because it's so obvious in a way. And we'll be focusing on gender next time out. What I'd like to think about instead are ads like this, which don't really sell us sex, but other things more subtly. And so I, what we do in semiotic analyses is to kind of look carefully at what's there. And so what we have evidence of and of course things have meaning and context but centered in the photo we have a couple they're white they're um presumably married uh i say that because of the connection that they're making with the hands with the fact that the woman obviously seems to be pregnant and on the soundtrack you'll hear sounds that encourage you to believe that they're in an upper middle class home. There's a lot of kind of soft light coming in. And on the bookshelf, we see what probably are family albums, photographs, evidence of this upper middle class lifestyle. Uh, boots, again, suggesting at the door of family, a fireplace. Warmth as well being associated here. And so as this plays and I'm going to let the music come in for a moment this is our first day this is my favorite this is my favorite so as I turn down the sound again and I encourage you to take a look for it this is happy ad is what it's called the this is happy commercial and so obviously at some level they're selling happiness but obviously as well they're selling this this sense of look at this love and connection going back to the family we originally had seen um, and even these moments which don't seem to be happy like the father confronting the messy bedroom of the sun I mean there's a kind of or here there's a kind of sense of of warmth and the lighting again it's all very warm the sharing with the young this idea of having if you want to go back to maslow's hierarchy of needs obviously their food and shelter needs have been met uh, and and so the idea of love and connection and possibly even going higher up to self-fulfillment self-actualization but this closeness but we don't know what the product is. We're just getting this emotional feeling that's almost unavoidable, not only because of the images, which are really powerful, I'm gonna let it continue on here, uh, but also, and again, that lighting, also the music, which really kind of cues us into how to feel. And here we find out what the product is and of course I already kind of suggested that to you so taking an ad like this even if it's not a print ad and, and really looking carefully at it might be kind of interesting just one more quickly um, this is one that really got to bug my wife <laughs> and so um, but Matthew McConaughey up through at least last year and he may still be doing this did a series of ads for the Lincoln car and uh, you can see there's music here <laughs> you might not ever just stand there looking at it I'm going to leave it there. But, of course, Matthew McConaughey comes with some cultural baggage, and there's a kind of artistic quality to it. If I can go back to him at the 
the desert, for example, standing outside. I mean, the setting's kind of interesting. It's the lone figure, right, with his car, kind of the sense of power. We see his, his very prominent, not here, but when it's on the steering wheel and most likely expensive ring and so on. And, and so we also have, of course, Matthew McConaughey. And the, the Lincoln, as we know, is not a cheap car. But so selling the idea of power to us, never telling us we're going to be like Matthew McConaughey if we buy this car. And when we think about it and say it, it's ridiculous. Uh, of course, we know that, right? So this is, these ads aren't meant to be looked at rationally. And this is where it gets interesting, because if you're just letting this buzz by you when you're watching TV, you're a very passive consumer. And folks, we all are, at times, very passive consumers. And that's when the kind of seeps in more insidiously, the idea that we too can be kind of like Matthew McConaughey, just a little bit, by buying this car. So the commodification of power the commodification of success, of self-satisfaction, which you're getting here big time, and even art, right? The idea like this artistic expression here being, being shown to you. So I want you to think of the commodification. Of, sorry, got cut off. So I, I just want you to think of the commodification of desire as more than sex cells, but that power cells, family cells, love cells, connection cells, but they never will make that connection for you. You make it yourself. Going back to Rasa Reed, you are the workforce because you put the two together in your mind even if you're not thinking about it. I know that doesn't seem intuitive, uh, but think about it next time you think of what toothpaste you're buying or what car you think is the one you really want to have. What is it that you about the car that really makes you want to buy it? So again, looking at these uh, ads carefully for Wednesday, please be in contact with me if you have any questions. This is a discussion I would love to have face-to-face -face with you all. So uh, hope you're willing to let you go. This has already gone on longer than I intended. Uh, it's cold outside, so be well.